so not really funny. But uh, you can just use our code because it's all templated. Like in Java, for example, this. You just tell us what is the monomial, how do I get an exponent, how do I say, does this by that? You should think twice. No, and then it will just work. So you can just use our code. You can use it. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second talk of the session. Uh, so Christian is going to talk about uh, signature-based perimeter basis algorithms in Singular. Hello. So I will. <coughs> In this talk, I will, I will <coughs> talk about linear algebra only at the very end, because I need linear algebra, but I don't have linear algebra right now in singular. So I will, I will give a short, <coughs> a short sum up about what a signature-based, scripture-based algorithm is, what they are doing other than a p power well implementation, for example. Then I will show you what different kinds of variants are around these days. I mean. Every two or three weeks, another paper in the archive <coughs> comes up to say, well, I have a new, easier version of a signature-based, perimeter-based algorithm, but in some sense, they are all just easy variants of each other. And then I will tell you about what I've implemented in the singular kernel <coughs> in my, as my PhD thesis. So, some preliminaries I mentioned, so we are working a lot <coughs> on the ring, on the field, well ordering, let's say, the monomials. And if that can be unity represented, there's a leading coefficient, leading monomial, and leading term. The leading term by means leading coefficient times leading monomial. An ideal I and R is an additive subgroup where <coughs> multiplication with elements from R is close. And of course, the group base is a finite set of say, S elements in R. This is a group of base of I. <coughs> if the leading ideals of the same respect to the ordering or group values criterion, if for all pairs M and G out of G, the S polynomial factor reduces to zero. And this And the basic problem is that <coughs> in a group basis computation, you if if you go on and use a, the usual bootbag implementation without any additional properties, you get lots and lots of zero reductions. So you take new pairs, you compute S polynomials, you reduce them, and they end up to be zero, and you're happy because you don't have to do anything with your G, but you have all that you've done all these computations and they were useless. So you want to avoid such zero reductions. So let's look at this small example, which we'll see for a long time in this talk. But let's say I is generated by G1 and G2 of the rationals in X, Y, and Z. We have, a, we have the graded reverse lexical graphical ordering. Let's say G1 is X, Y minus Z squared, and G2 is Y squared minus Z. Then the S polynomial of these two. And we see we cannot further reduce this element, so we end up with G3 being X, Z squared minus Y, Z. Then we add this to G, so we go on with the new S polys. G3 and G1. But here now we see, well, we can further reduce this <coughs> with Z squared G2, and then we end up with zero. So our point is we want to avoid such computations. Yeah? Since we've built this S polynomial, we have searched for reduce, and we found one, we've reduced, and we end up with zero, but this S polynomial already fulfills Buchberger's criteria. So the idea is, how can we discard such zero reductions in advance, or how can we predict zero reductions? And then, you know, there are Buchberger's criteria, so the product criterion and the chain criterion. And here I present <coughs> the signature-based criterion, which were introduced by Roger with the F5 algorithm. And I will present you right now a generic signature-based algorithm. So I present a very slow and generic version of this, but mainly all efficient variants, which I will talk about later on, are just variants of this, and have some nice ideas and some nice aggressive implementations of the criteria of the in general. So 
uh, we give the basic idea, I represent <coughs> the algorithm, and then we talk about generic signature based criteria. Okay. Let's again start with an idea generated by m elements of 1 to m. And the idea mainly is to give each such element in the ideal i a bit more of a structure and use this structure to discard useless <coughs> elements. So if, I, if we have this m generated by ideal, we can look at <coughs> the free module after the m generated by canonical generators e1 and to the m. So let's say we have a well ordering on these monomials in r to the m, and we have such a map pi from r to the m to r such that each such canonical generated EI is met to version n Now, well, each element, let's say P in my ideal I, can be represented by such an element S, which is a linear combination of this, of this canonical generator, so by an element in R to the M. If I, <coughs> if I enforce it that pi of S is equal to this. And of course, this is not a unique but I find infinitely many such elements S. And the idea is not to, to say the signature of such a polynomial P is just the leading monomial of such an element S in the module, such that this S, of course, is P. And because we have a <coughs> well ordering on our module, there exists such a minimum. Our idea is now to always look at the signature. So this product criterion and this chain criterion in the book right always looks at the polynomials itself. But here we are really looking at the signatures. And now, of course, I mean <coughs> our initial elements get initial signatures which are trivial. So such an fi, this initial element, gets a signature ei, of course. But I have to explain to you how did how does now, if I want to compute a Krippner basis, how did a, a new S polynomial get a signature? And I explain it in our example. It's easy. And for our example, so in this talk, for the example, let us say that we always use here position over term. Yeah? We will talk about using other orderings on R to the M at the end when I come to the efficient methods. So let's get back to our example. So we had. <coughs> G1 and G2, so the signature of G1 is E1, the signature of G2 is E2. Now we built the S polynomial G1, of G2 and G1, it was X times G2 minus Y times G1. And we have seen this gave us a new element G3. And now, in this case, so we say that the signature of G3 is X times the signature of G2. Because the position of a term this element here has signature x times e2, and this has signature y times e1. Because the position has priority over the term, this 2 in the index wins over the 1. And we always take the maximum of the signatures. And of course, there are questions what happens if both generators of my S polynomial give us the same signature, but this stuff is handled by the criteria we will talk about later on. So for the moment, we can just think about we have different signatures here, and we take the maximum to be the signature of the new element which comes out of our S polynomial. But then in our example, we went on and we made the F polynomial of G3 and G1, which was y times G3 minus z squared G1. So then, as I've shown you, so the signature of this S polynomial would be y times the signature g3, yeah, because this has index 2, position 2, and this has position 1. So we end up with x, y, e2, as the signature of this s polynomial. But now we should note one thing, namely that this signature has <coughs> the term x, y, and the leading monomial of g1 is also x, y. And so in a signature based the base algorithm, the nice fact is that at this point we know that this s polynomial will reduce to zero. Why? I will explain in the following slides. But in a signature based algorithm, we can stop right at this point. And we do not have to do this completely. Okay. So that's a bit of <coughs> why we want to use this. 
So, what's now the general idea? The general idea is to check the signatures of these generated new elements. And if the signature of such an S polynomial is not minimal for this S polynomial, we don't need to compute this S polynomial. So our goal is to find and discard as many S polynomials as possible for which the algorithm computes a non-minimal signature. This has two problems. First of all, how can we detect if the signature is not minimal? And second of all, well, we have to take care of the signatures. So we need to look that the signatures are correct during the whole process of the Bruckner braces computation. Yeah? Because I, our criteria are based on the signatures, so of course during the computations we need to take care that the signatures are still correct when we are reducing polynomials and so on and adding new S polynomials. That's the name. So, right now I try to give you a very generic signature based program based problem. This is slow, but it is. It's easy to understand, and I try to highlight in yellow the differences to a usual Buchberg algorithm. So, and the first difference is what you see above here is that the output is poly of G. And to explain what I mean by poly of set G, it's easiest to look at this line. So, G is first of all the empty set, and then I add to G tuples. Namely, my FIs together with the signatures, the EMs. Yeah? Those, are, those are my initial elements. And of course, and if I'm talking about the poly of G, then in the end, I just mean the set of all those polynomials. So I cut out all the signatures at the end. Because at the end, I want to get a, a Grubner basis, so I want to get a polynomial set. So I just cut out all the EIs, all the signatures. This is what I always mean by poly. And next, as usual, I build a pair set of all <coughs> of pairs of such elements in G. And of course, I can do this. I can make this restriction here. I is greater than J. Otherwise, I would end up <coughs> doubles or elements which are just differences between <coughs> my unit. And then, so. As usual, so while this pair set P is not empty, I I choose such a pair such that the signature of the corresponding S polynomial is minimal. It's minimal with respect to all other pairs which are in P. So I go, so I take this one whose signature is minimal. And then I cut this one out of P. And then this one here our criterion I told you. So if the signature now for the S polynomial is not minimal for the S polynomial itself, then I can discard it. Only if it is minimal, or only if I cannot say it is not minimal, I go on with the computations. Yeah? So this is a difference in minimality. So this means minimal <coughs> looking at all signatures of elements in P, whereas this is our criterion to compute the signature and look and try to detect in some way, which I haven't explained to you right now, but which I will afterwards, how can I say this signature is really the minimal signature? And if I cannot discard it here, I have to do computations, so I store this element in H. I reduce the polynomial. Part of H, yeah, remember this again. This again is a tuple having a signature and a polynomial part. I reduce it with respect to G, it could end up to zero. Or it could end up to be non zero, so we end up in an element R, polynomial part is not zero. But then in the usual book bag algorithm, yeah, you build new pairs with this new element R, the elements you have already in G. And then you add this R. <coughs> to your set G. And then at the end, you would return polio. The problem is that now we, if you can 
do this here good, then we have our goal, but we haven't done our task, namely that we have to look for the correctness of our signatures. Namely, these reductions here have to be so-called signature safe. So I cannot do all reductions right now. In a usual bookback algorithm, you look, you look for elements with a, for a dividing the leading term, and then you do the reduction. Here you cannot do this in any case. So some reductions are not allowed. I will show you later on which ones. But this leads to the fact that you can end up here with the useless data. And this means that at the end you have to make a check that we only add elements R such that as well such that the signature part of R as well as the leading monomial of the polynomial of R are not multiples of elements which are already in G. This is something that cannot happen in the usual bootbag algorithm because in the usual bootbag algorithm you would have done this reduction. Yeah? But here it can happen because it is possible that this reduction of R by G is not signatures. Yeah? So that's important. So this signatures gives us good tests for useless elements, but we also have to take care that we <coughs> do all these signatures here. And so what do we mean by this? So let's say we have these two polynomials P and U. And let's say we want to do this reduction. So Q is a reducer of P. Yeah, P you can think of an S polynomial. We are just trying to reduce. And we, we are computing P minus C times monomial M times Q. Then we put signature safe. If <coughs> the signature after the reduction is a signature. So this means that I mean, this one here is just a special case of an s poly computation. So again, what do we choose here as a signature is the maximum. So if this is the case, this means that the signature of m times q is lower than the signature of q. Other cases are signature increasing computations. And in this case, the signature of m times q is greater than the signature of p. Result we get this signature. And then you have signature decreasing, where those two signatures are equal, and then during the reduction the signature would get, <coughs> would get lower. But since we only store this leading term, it gets lower, but we don't have any information about this leading term. Yeah? So although this we can but these reductions are also taken care of by our criteria. And so the fact is, in this generic version I present here, we only do this first kind of, of, of reductions and not this higher signature reductions. This is something, if you look at the initial F5 paper, this higher signature reductions are taking place and they build new elements you try to reduce. In our setting, those are also built. But those are built afterwards, this R is added, then you build new pairs, and there, possibly, this higher signature reduction also takes place and it goes on. Okay, so let us get a short overview why, why this works. So, <coughs> why does this terminate? So, of course, so we are. So we are in this period, and if we have that our element R is a multiple on the signature and on the polynomial side, then we don't add it to G, so we get not an infinite loop. So each new element we add to G enlarges yeah, the monomodule. And this can only have finitely many generators. This is something we have presented in our ESA paper last year, John Perry and I. Correctness? Well, yeah. We look at all possible S polynomials, and the signature increasing reductions, as I told you, mm -hmm. if they are really necessary for the correctness of the algorithm, they will be taken care of once this element is added 
to G and new pairs of the information. Yeah? So signature increase in reduction means a new pair in the next step of the algorithm. And all elements in R where poly R is not zero, are added to G besides those which are pretty useless. I mean, it's clear an element R which fulfills these two equations is useless for the group number basis. I don't need to add it. Yeah, so that's the general idea. Okay. So now we have the general idea of why this works. So now the question is how we get this, <coughs> how we can get out when, when such a signature is not minimum. How can we check when, when to discard an S polynomial? And then we have also here we have two main criteria. The one is the non minimal signature. Criterion or the F5 criterion or Fougere's criterion. Plainly in the generic version it says if the signature of H is not minimal, well, then we can remove it. And if it's not minimal, then this means there exists a synergy, S in R to the N. And the leading monomial of the synergy is equal to the signature of H. <coughs> So this means in R to the M, I can <coughs> subtract the representation of my age I have from the algorithm, minus this S, and I get a representation with the lower signature of my element age. Now, in our algorithm, all pairs and all elements are handled by increasing signatures, so elements of lower signature are already taken care of. So all these, those relations are already taken care of, so I don't need to handle this again. That's the channel. Back to our example. So we have position over term. We had seen that the signature of our S polynomial of G3 and G1 is x, y, e2. Now let's look at the principal synergy of G1 and G2. If we build this, we get G1 e2 minus G2 e1, which has a leading monomial x, y, e2. So we have exactly this synergy which tells us that we don't need to. That's one idea. And I mean, so the, the idea is to get as much as possible of these synergies. And of course, at the beginning, you can always take all the principal synergies. And then, of course, when you have a, a zero reduction, you want to add the signature of the zero reduction because it's a new synergy the signature of the leading monomial of the synergy because you have done only only uh, <coughs> only signature safe reduction steps yeah that's the idea to get this criteria <coughs> stronger during the computation then there's a second criteria the rewritable signature criteria the generic version is well if i have two elements g and h and both of the same signature then i can remove either g or h idea. So if we look at G minus H, and I don't say that on the polynomial side the leading terms cancel out each other. I just look at G minus H. And I really know that this has a lower signature than G and, and H. So what does this mean? Again our pairs are handled by increasing signatures. So this means all stuff of lower signature have already been taken care of, so I can represent my H as G plus, yeah, those element, elements which are behind G minus A, so elements with, which have lower signature. So it's enough to compute G and I can discard it. And these are generic versions of this criteria. Yeah, so, I mean, clearly, I mean, there's no real <coughs> how, how to implement this. And now, all variants I present next really mainly differ in how they in how aggressively they, they implement these non-minimal signature criteria and this rewritable signature criteria. Of course, there are some differences in, as I told, as I said, using top in, in, in a top reduction already computing this higher signature stuff or taking it later on or checking the reducers by the criteria or not. So, let's look at 
it's more like you know, historical stuff I'm telling you. In the beginning it was <laughs> 2002. So Roger presented this algorithm and in the presentation of the paper he uses the position over term ordering on the signatures, so it's an incremental algorithm. And then we have for JS criterion, so it's the implementation of the non-minimal signature criterion where we are using the principal syzygies for discarding elements. And we have a, yeah, let's say, a very aggressive implementation of the rewritable signature criterion. So, in 2009, two things happened. So, so around the end of 2008, I started looking at this algorithm and I wanted to understand it. And then there were a cooperation with John Perry from the USA. And John Perry came here and we started, and we started with just doing a singular library implementation. So it's slow and you cannot do benchmarks with it. It was just about to understand how the algorithm works. So at the beginning we had no idea how it really works and how the reduction works and so on. We made this and during that time we are doing this, we had some idea which we presented at the MEGA 2009, which is now called as variant F5C. This variant has only one new thing, namely during each iteration step you have intermediate group bases. And the point is during this Restricted reduction steps. It is possible that your grip, your intermediate group bases are not not minimal, and not reduced. So you get a bit of overhead of data. And our idea was, well, when I'm in the intermediate step, I just reduce my grip bases. The point is, by reducing my grip bases, all the signatures I had computed beforehand are wrong at this point. Because what I'm doing, reducing the grid basis, I'm doing exactly these reduction steps I wasn't allowed to do beforehand. So I need to give my elements new signatures, and then I start the next iteration step. So by this we get we get we get a nice speed of about five to even up to twenty percent in some examples. Yeah? Because we get the number of elements smaller. So if I if I so this really cuts out, like in Cyclic 8, this, this, this cuts out like 500 to 600 generators at the end. And at the same time, Alberto Ave, which was also, who were also at the MEGA, um, had this first preprint of his idea of a signature-based algorithm in the archive, where he had another implementation of the rewritten criteria. Namely, so, so his, his idea was, well, I just, I just look at all elements which have the same signature and then I take the one which has the lowest leading monomial on the polynomial side and all the others I discount. Yeah, that's just an implementation of this generic one I've said. And then John worked with him on this paper and I think it's already published. And then in 2010 at the ESA, Gao, Guan, and Wally presented their G2V algorithm, which is also an incremental algorithm. So it also uses position over term on the signatures. And this algorithm, well, it's a lot easier to understand. But this has, <coughs> of course, because of something. So, so it has some, some quite good idea, quite nice idea is, namely, so at these implementations, we really only used principal syzygies for the F5 criteria, or at least I used. I don't know if you're interested in it. But um, Galvan and Wolny presented the idea that well, when I have a zero reduction, then the corresponding signature is the leading monomial of the new syzygy. So add this to your set of syzygies and make your your non-minimal signature criterion stronger. So this was a new thing, a new good thing, a new optimization we come in. The point is that this algorithm does not use any real rewritten criteria. The only thing they are using is when they add new pairs, and they have a pair which has already the signature, they keep, I think they keep the older one, and don't add the newer one. 
that's the only case how they use the rewritten criteria. And okay, there are some problems in this paper. They they said that they are two to ten times faster than F5. Now they they made the timings against our singular library implementation, which is completely based on interpreted code. And which was done for teaching us how F5 works. So, and they have also done a library implementation in singular, but they, for example, for the reduction steps and for the checking of the criteria, they use kernel commands of singular. Whereas we are, in our library implementation, using really the interpreter commands and do it by hand. So, so at the end I will talk about this. So nearly all of these variants you see here I've implemented in the singular kernel. And I will tell you which ones are, for us, the fastest and the most efficient ones. So, but let us just go on with the picture. So then in 2011, Gao, Wally, and Wang presented their paper about GBW which is the idea of G2B, but with using different orderings on the signatures. And they found out that the ordering they call G2, which is in some sense nothing else but the induced Schreier ordering, is the fastest one. And this gives you here a non-incremental signature-based ordering. Okay. Otherwise, on the criteria side, they use exactly the same values. And, well, yeah, and this is just a little optimization, yeah, so we used F5C and then we added this idea with adding the signatures of the zero reductions to your set of syzygies, which gave us an improvement on this. And we, so, I mean, I mean we, we really gave it only a name because this was presented in our ESAC paper 2011 where we, where we made this generic signature-based class and where we wanted to <coughs> compare all these different kinds of algorithms, so we have to give it some name to, <coughs> to see what's the difference there. Okay. Then, well, beginning of this year, I made some very, very little <coughs> improvement. That's why it's only a small i, lower i. For all these incremental algorithms, you can improve. And it, it's just an improvement of this intermediate step when you reduce the Gribner basis and you have to recompute the signatures. That's just a tiny little trick which can, can give you some more syzygy, some more material. But it's, 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 it's really, in some examples, it's one or two percent faster. It's nothing But during this, I also made the first real implementation of this rather theoretical paper of Ari and Perry. Then I made this implementation of this algorithm with the position over term ordering, so this is an incremental implementation. And now at the end, it's really the end, there's nothing more coming on this slide. So, what we have now again is, I also done this implementation as a non-incremental one with the induced try ordering. I also done an F5 implementation with the induced Schreier ordering, so it is also <coughs> a non-incremental one. And Janke and Mike Stillman, they will present it at the ESA, have also done an implementation which is also a variant of Ari and Perry's algorithm, and it's a non-incremental one. And it has some nice facts and some nice ideas of how to improve the criteria checks and data structures. So, so actually, we believe that Ari and Perry and no. At least in, in the way that we've been doing it, it uh, doesn't make any difference. No. But, 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 but they, are, they, are, they are done checking this criteria exactly in this way. Oh, yeah, except for the rewriting criteria. Yeah. It's, so and and this rewriting stuff is really important. That's true. It's really important. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean for, the, for the syzygy criteria, of course, they are sharing the same ideas. But this, this way of this rewritten criteria is implemented here, it's very important. And, you see it in the timings that if you really implement this and check this criteria, this really gets slower than implemented. It's, yeah. it's true that that criteria is different. Our implementation is that you can use any ordering you want. Yeah. It doesn't end to be. Okay. So, and so my first part was is 
I mean, of course, so, so recently there's some other algorithms. So Vasily Galkin has, has, print, has made a preprint on the archive one or two weeks ago about his SSG algorithm. It's also a simple variant of a signature-based algorithm, which is nothing else but the reformulation of Aris and Paris algorithm in the position over term ordering. It's just a reformulation. And he has implemented it on my singular code. And I've taken it for three or four days and implemented a non-incremental version out of it. So and in some examples, this is also sometimes faster, sometimes way slower. But in some sense, these are all just tiny little differences in these implementations. Yeah. So. I was just wondering, actually, aren't you missing like the... Uh, the like, XL and the MXL? No, no, they're not. I mean, and then there are too many of them. I mean like the uh, force style, like given generally us, like uh, there's a... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, because, I'm, it makes, because you mentioned incremental, non-incremental, like these versions, like yeah, the force style is always like, non-incremental, right? Yeah, right. So I'm, I'm, I, I mentioned here only versions which are not based on linear algebra. The workshop on that. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, of course. So, so there's a simple implementation of uh, granola R's. I don't know if there's implementation, but it's in the PhD thesis. It's in his PhD thesis. There he uses, he uses also some trick for the termination. Namely, he has two lists of critical pairs. One with the signatures, one without the signatures. And he checks in the list without the signatures by the second criterion. To get a <coughs> to get the termination stuff. Yeah, that's right. I haven't put this on this slide. So implemented in singular, I have all this stuff here. Besides this one. And first of all, I've implemented it <coughs> in a singular kernel, but without using all this sufficient data structure of singular, since I wanted to compare all these variants and want to see which is really the efficient one. So without, without um, optimizing for one variant, I just use the same data structure and I just, and I just uh, <coughs> swap the criteria, how they are used, when they are used, how the reduction is done, and all this stuff. And so for us, it turned out that these four variants were the fastest one and the most efficient one. So this is, this is an incremental F5 with some optimization. This is a non-incremental F5, and that's an incremental and a non-incremental array algorithm. So, and these four I've implemented really <coughs> in the singular kernel using also the data structures of singular scalar or Miller implementation. And well, let's see what we get. So I use the same colors on this slide for timings. So white is Singular's usual Gebauer Miller implementation. And then, yeah, then we have incremental F5, incremental array, non-incremental F5, non-incremental array. And, well, those are, those are example sets from like five seconds up to one or two days. So and I don't want to put all these numbers on these slides. So I just want to give you a feeling how much faster the signature-based algorithms are. So 100% means that's the one which takes a lot, the longest time, and then the percentage, the other algorithms. And as you can see, for example, this red city is set. So it's, it's, it's really, really fast. Yeah? And I mean, you can see here in all examples, other than this one example, and here, we are really, really faster. But you also see that, in some cases, the incremental ones are way faster than the non-incremental ones. But the point is, the world does not only consist of this one row, but also of this one row. Oops. And uh, it's, not, it's not too bad. Because if you look, for example, at this one, the incremental implementations are way faster. And exactly for this consumer ones, we are really fast. Yeah. And also and also here at the end for the RPBL, you see that the non-incremental ones are way faster, whereas the incremental ones are way slower. So right now I'm working on how how can I see when is it good to use which variant? It's not only it's not only the question sometimes about about uh, 
incremental or non-incremental, it's also a question about Ari's rewritten criterion or Fourier's rewritten criterion. Yeah, it's also such a question. Now, this is what I'm currently working on. So, and these are timings for homogeneous and non-homogeneous. So this mainly are the same. I just wonder about the cyclic egg because these this seems to suggest that the signature algorithms are not so fast for cyclic egg, which is not what I. Yes, yes, it. yes. Um, do you have a, uh, an explanation? No. Like, right now I have no explanation. So you can, so on my on my GitHub site, you can get all the code I have. So it's it's right now the code is not in the in the current singular branch, but I have an, an own branch, and I keep it current with the singular branch, so you can just check it out and configure your singular as you like it. There's also a wiki explaining how you get all these variants of the algorithms. You can check it. On my GitHub site, there's also a benchmark project where I have all the benchmarks I've tested in singular library format and all results I got out of it on our compute server to compare the timings and I update it whenever I have a new version of the algorithms. You can really look at it. And it's not that I have only checked this one. I've, only, I've also checked random ones. Yeah? I mean, there are like, I think, over 100 example sets on this, on this benchmark setting on, on the GitHub. And um, so one point also is that most of the so so I have not found an example where the usual Eva or Miller implementation and the signature based implementation are really the same in the same range. So they are all, always mostly there are quite a lot of difference in the computation in time. Mm -hmm. This is something I want to I want to under, I try to understand. When it is good. So, so right now, I'm really working on some stuff like heuristics. So when to use which orderings and signatures, orderings for critical pairs. I mean, so in some cases, you really get using your critical pairs by increasing signature, you get really an ordering by the sugar degree in the inhomogeneous situation, which is good. Oh, how, how to check your list of reducers in this case. And of course, now I'm coming. I need linear algebra for reductions. Parallelization, okay, I mean, clearly you can do modular methods if you're computing over characteristic zero, but also you can also do some, some parallel criteria checks here. Yeah, I mean, that's not much, but you can do it. Computation of syzygies, and just the point of implementing it. And then, yeah, what's about the criteria? Possibly, possibly one could try to save more than just the leading term in the signature, to have a bit more flexibility on the reduction, but I, I, I haven't tried it right now. Or, for example, relaxing the criteria to get a better combination with Buchberger's criteria, yeah? to get not very fast Buchberger, very slow signature-based algorithm, or the other way around, but to have it down. And I think so. Vladimir Gerd is doing some work with involutive bases where he combines told me the at least the non-minimal signature criterion with some of Buchberger's criteria and so and so there's also work on that. Yes. And that's it. So these are some of the bibliography that have been the recent stuff and of the stuff I'm talking here. Yeah of course I have not put out the PhD thesis because I <coughs> mentioned in the oh. I mean, with an implementation or without an implementation? Without the implementation. Well, as we got to know yesterday, it's your paper. <laughs> but, but it was so. So, the first time I read it was in the preprint of Ari's paper. Okay. But Ari gave me this preprint at the Mega, and I don't, I cannot remember if he had put it online at this point. But the GB, GBW paper was later on. It was like 2000, end of 2010, I think. Yeah, I think the art paper got online very, very late. Yeah. Like after it was submitted, and, and then someone went off 
get something for the air in the Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, this oral paper took a long time. So, but the first time it got mentioned to me was by Alberto Ari at the Mega Conference 2009. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Barcelona. Yeah. But we met at the stage. <laughs> This has also used position over term order. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, the, yes. I mean it, it has the linear algebra part of course. Yeah, but, but, but what is called the matrix F5 algorithm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was known uh, from the beginning because this is what we use, for instance, to break the HEP uh, challenge. So Yeah, but was was this also No, it was incremental. Yes. It was incremental, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but his question was what was the first Oh okay. okay. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course the matrix a five version, yeah. I mean, I mean, the problem is I wanted to show various which are which you really can understand from my presentation of generic signature based algorithm, and those two variants are differ from this, and I had to explain a bit more around it. Yeah, I mean, at least the matrix F five has some differences. I mean, of course, it it, it has some connections to G two V because it. As far as I remember, it does not really use the rewritten criteria. Yeah, or, or it is it exactly the same. It is just uh, you do the same algorithm using linear algebra, and uh, it is exactly the same algorithm. It is just. Uh, but I think in in, in one of Barbet's papers, it uses only. Yes, because you integrate. Yeah. Automatically, yes. the, the the criterion, but it is exactly the same. Okay. Just a very simple, you can describe the algorithm in two or three slides. It is very simple to, to implement. Is to the matrix of five the one without the uh, S chronometers? It's just you do everything. Yes, that's yes, that's usually that's yes, but it is an interpretation of yes. S polynomial. Yes. Just you. Yes. Sure. But just to describe and to to understand when, when you, you, you don't allow to reduce one polynomial by another one. It's yes. very easy to understand which linear algebra. Yes. Yes. It's just, so we use yes. one line by another one, yes. or you swap the two lines. Yes. So it's, uh, and so, what do you believe what uh, will happen? Because there is a kind of uh, exponential uh, number of papers on, uh, <laughs> on this subject. I hope it will stop at some time. <laughs> so I'm. Um, I mean, so the last two or three publications I've read are just really uh, reformulations of stuff which are really there, which are really implementation, implementation which are there. So um, I read it. So this this last treatment of Vasari Galkin is just an idea of how to define a new ordering. But in the end, with this new ordering, he describes just Ari's algorithm. Um, My impression is that there's a convergence where really everything can be described as just different choices in like in one fairly general algorithm. Just just like yeah. different term models, two guys algorithm. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, with, with and that's I mean, I mean, that's my question. In the sort of time, like you said, when to use which variant and, and how, and this is something I have no feeling for. Are these benchmarks for Q or for Mod P? Those. For mod P for 2002. There are also benchmarks uh, for Q on online. But for, for the incremental algorithm, yes, it depends on the order of the, the polynomials. Yes. So, um, what is your strategy to, to in your benchmark? It can depend, for instance, for cyclic. Depends strongly on the order of the polynomials. Yes, I mean, I mean, so these times were for uh, graded reverse lexicographical ordering, and then, so I, I, uh, no, but also I start the, with the with the smallest one. Yes, but it is not necessarily the best. Strategy. Yes, yes, of course. I mean, I'm playing around with this stuff too. And especially but for cyclic, you, you should not do that. Okay. 
So what is the best strategy for saving that? You have to, to swap uh, the last equation and the number of Because the, the last equation, yes. you can remove a lot of solution at infinity with this one. The product of the variables is equal to one. So you have to be careful. Is that an automatic way to discover that sort of thing? Or is it something that we have to experiment with while we have to? question I have so what did you use to draw these pictures? <laughs> Tix mind map. Yes. What did you say? So Tix is a lattice packet and then the mind map packet of Tix. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> right then that's thank you speak again.